In today's video, I am going to be breaking down two players that are really getting a lot of comments for me to break down. That is Victor Rembanyama and Kai Soto. So let's get down. Let's check out these two amazing players. Really quickly, if you want to be able to shoot the basketball from further away and better, make sure to go check out the link down in the description below for the hardest basketball shooting workout. So first, we're going to start with a screen by Kai Soto, and he's going to then roll towards the rim. Now, when he's doing this roll, there's a few things that I really want to point out, especially for those younger players. And that is, when you roll to the basket, yes, he's cheating. He is just basically cutting to the basket after the screen. What he should be doing, and even at this level I would say 100% he should, is to drop this foot down. Almost like a reverse pivot. That way he can seal this man behind him, and he's looking at the ball. Because this man's going in this direction, with him just turning this way, he's not looking at the ball. This is a, a, a cheap, a very lazy way to set a screen. And he could actually get himself open more often than not. If he was to actually roll this way, he may have been open for an open lane to get that ball. But instead, this player has to pass to the corner and then... Kai Soto is wide open in the post. He gets wide. He has his hands up. This is very important, especially for those younger players looking to get that ball. You have to get yourself visible. He then gets that lob in to that low post, and he's able to then do that layup. Personally, I would have just told him to dunk it, but of course, that's him. Now in this play, he pops out to the opposite side three and he's able to hit that shot. He has a pretty good shooting form, especially for somebody as tall as him. Now, he does shoot at a very high percentage with a high set point, so it's going to be hard to block. This guy should have been running out to make it at least a little bit tougher. Now this is why you want to shoot threes as a big man. As soon as he takes that shot fake, that gets his man onto his heels, and Kai Soto takes that dribble in. This man right here is already boxing out his man. There's a massive height advantage for the Philippines player, and he's able to get that layup. Good look by Kai Soto. And then here he's able to hit that three in transition. You have to make defenses pay. If they're not coming out to guard you, you need to be able to hit those threes. And that's exactly what Kai Soto did here. He was able to hit that three. He had a rebounder in position. So he it was, an, it was a good shot. That's going to pull that defender out more likely next time, which will allow Kai Soto to drive. Here, there's a quick shot fake. He's able to stay on his feet. He didn't go into the air, which allowed him to then get this block. When this guy on offense went for that shot fake, if Kai Soto went up into the air, this would have been an easy layup, but Kai Soto was able to get that block because he stayed on the ground. He understands that he's much bigger anyways, so that even if this guy did shoot, it would have still gotten blocked anyway, so why jump? Now here he really sprints hard to the open area of the court to get that pass from the screen and roll. Now here he's able to get that basket with an and one, but this is of course the World Cup qualifiers in Asia going against Jordan, and they're not very strong in the post. Now this is really impressive here. Now Victor Wembanyama has a massive three to four inch height difference on Kai Soto. So he's going to have a massive advantage in the low post just like Kai Soto. However, Victor Wembanyama has the handles and the body control and strength even to finish in the post with two and a half guys on him. And both of these players can and will shoot in transition as we see here. Again, his man is not coming up to guard him for this three. And any time that you are in transition or you're coming into the offense, you can shoot threes and your man is not guarding you, in my opinion... Unless you're trying to run your offense, you should always look to try to hurt them from the three-point line, especially if you've got rebounders in the key, so that you can continue the play if you were to miss. Because now this will happen. If you're out in the perimeter, your guy's going to be guarding you tighter. Here he went for the Victor Remanyama went for the shot fake, and now he's able to attack the basket. When he attacks the basket, he keeps that ball high so that he can finish right at the rim. But if it wasn't for his three-point shots earlier on, and well known for three-point shooting, then this drive would have not been there. Now this is a very simple offense. We're actually going to be running this with my high school team. A 1-3-1 one, one offense against a zone. Get that ball into the high post. That draws up that middle defender. You can alley-oop to the baseline, the dunker spot, the Russian spot, wherever you want to call it. 
And, of course, that will get your team, especially if you have dunkers like we do, to be able to get some easy baskets. Anytime that you have a big man on your team, so if you've got a 7'6 guy, or if you've got guys who are just taller than everybody else, if you can lob this ball over top of the defense to him, if he's in the post, and then he can just go for that shot, there's really no nothing and nobody who can stop that at this level. And by the way, Victor Reminyama can also block a ton of shots. And we see this over and over again. Now, really quickly, if you're the offensive player here, I really want to break this down for you. If you're attacking the basket on a guy who's going to block your shot 100% of the time, there's a few things that you need to do. Number one is, no matter what side you go to here, he's going to block your shot. You're like 6'4", 6'5", and he's 7'6", he's going to block your shot every time. It doesn't matter what you do, but watch. If he was to go up one step earlier, watch how much red or how less ready Victor Weminyama is. If you were to go up for a shot here, let's say, you pick up and you go for a floater from here. Victor Weminyama's shoulders are pointing that way. Here, they're pointing towards the rim. Which means that if he was to throw up a floater off of his right foot from the free throw line or just inside, then Victor Webanyama wouldn't be able to block his shot like he does here. It's all about timing. Good defensive players will time your second step, which means that you need to get it off in one step if there's a really good shot blocker. I hope that this video has helped you. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe, make sure to go check out the link down below for the hardest basketball shooting workout, and I'll see you guys again next time.